I'd like to um, give a, a really brief overview of the project. Um, this was one of the few, as uh, Professor Kassar mentioned, one of the few interdisciplinary projects uh, funded by the UK EPSRC AHRC Science and Heritage Programme. And uh, speaking from my own personal perspective, this was a really, really challenging project in many ways. It was a really interdisciplinary one, and um, it took a few research meetings uh, for <coughs> conservators and physicists and chemists and social scientists and experimental psychologists to start talking the same language. Um, however, uh, what, what I believe is that we produced a set of novel modeling techniques uh, in order to understand collections better, and we're eager to present some of these today uh, uh, to yourselves. Uh, this was also a fairly international project with partners uh, from the National Archives in the UK, uh, from the University of East Anglia, English Heritage, but also internationally from the Library of Congress, and uh, later on the, Nash the Dutch National Archives joined the project as well. The uh, Collections Demography Project looked at a number of research questions revolving around understanding how large collections um, age and how they decay. Uh, this, um, the novelty of this approach is in that we see each object individually. We're not, we're not looking at objects as a monolith, but we're rather looking at objects as, uh, at collections as collections of individual objects. And we're looking at processes taking place in collections as uh, dynamic processes taking place at, in, a, in a time frame not dissimilar to aging of human populations. Which is why we see the demographic approach or the uh, statistical science approach really useful in understanding these collections. We were looking at collections through the lens of three main research streams, values, environment, and material properties. And we're looking forward to your feedback to understand whether we integrated those three streams of research successfully and whether that research could be applied in other contexts of collection management, not only paper and library collections. The reason why we think that the demographic approach is suitable is because populations can be seen as, um, as uh, collections of individuals or objects, if you like, and because um, this particular approach is also sometimes used in other, uh, not only in social science, but also in management of other stocks, for example, uh, living stocks or, um, or uh, stocks of building, uh, or, or building stocks, if you like. And demography, as you know, is the science of understanding pro the, the processes of change in large populations. So the terminology and the language is already there. And some of the methods that we were interested in are also already there. Uh, however, we had to be quite innovative in terms of applying those, that language and that methodology uh, in the context of collection management. Under we, we understand large collections as uh, as if they were composed of small collections, of small sets of objects that can be managed, uh, in, that, can, that are managed using a set of management criteria. Environmental management or management of access. And where if we apply these criteria homogeneously through a particular collection, we can understand how different management scenarios can translate into the future and how the decay or how the aging of those collections uh, can be managed better or more optimally, if you like. Objects can migrate from one collection to the other. Uh, for example, um, objects can migrate from a, um, from a general access collection to a rare print collection, if you like. And objects are constantly accessed into a collection, although, um, to be quite frank, we weren't particularly interested those processes, because uh, even processes within a collection are already quite difficult to understand. And sometimes objects become unfit for purpose, meaning that they can no longer be accessed um, under the same conditions. 
or um, the management criteria need to be changed. We were looking at these processes through the lifetime of an object and we were looking at the lifetime, at the processes from, a diff from different points of view and from different scales. We were looking at the climate very generally, we were looking at the indoor environment, we were looking at, at collections within process, at processes within collections, at processes taking place within an object, and finally, we were looking at material properties which affect these processes. And during today, we're going to take you and we're going to, uh, through this process, through the, through the thinking which we developed in a number of uh, presentations. Fabiopi <coughs> Fusetti uh, from the UCL Center for Sustainable Heritage will talk a bit about the values and value sets which are used in order to understand how, how collections and sites can be managed better through the perspective of values, users and other stakeholders attached to heritage. Catherine Dillon from UCL Center for Sustainable Heritage will take us through the methodology of quantitative assessment of these values and also um, she will also talk about um, the long-term, uh, sorry, about the uh, long-term uh, planning processes um, which might be applied to collections. I will then spend 15 minutes to talk a bit more about the processes taking place within objects that may render them unfit for purpose. Uh, Eva Maynard, uh, PhD student at the UCL Center for uh, Sustainable Heritage and uh, funded independently by the Dutch National Archives, will talk about historic paper and particularly pollution. Uh, Costa Santanos will talk about how these processes can be integrated into a single <coughs> demographic model and how we can use that model in order to develop better environmental management strategies. And Peter Brimblecombe will be joining us via Skype to talk about uh, to talk about climate change and how larger how processes uh, taking place at, at, at very long time scales might affect collections in the future. And we're going to finish the day with a roundtable discussion where our partners from heritage institutions, Fenella France, Harry De Bruyne and Nancy Bell will join us to talk about the future of collection management and whether the principles we will be discussing today are applicable in their own contexts. We will be using a very, very simple stock model um, to, um, to describe the processes and the modeling approaches today. Uh, we're, we're looking at a constant cycle of assessment of a collection through a value framework through the agents of change such as environment and use. We will be integrating those into a single dose response function and we'll, we will be feeding back collection data into our, fa into our function through a material survey, which is no nothing less or more than a census in a population sense. And finally, nothing would, uh, this project wouldn't have been possible without collaboration uh, in, uh, with, with a range of other institutions uh, from the British Library, Welcome, uh, Welcome Library uh, here in London, but also a number of other institutions who participated and obviously individuals who participated in the project. And finally, we are particularly proud to have involved almost 900 volunteers in our research in various, uh, in various aspects of our research. Thank you very much for coming today. I hope you enjoyed the day.